recipe that's quick and easy and not really fussy but really clean eating hi everybody patty dooley here with tupperware and today i'm doing a recipe in my pressure cooker here and it's a soup recipe i'm a soup person i love my soups but i don't know how many of you may feel like i do but do you ever get to the point where you just don't want food i know <laughs> it's strange but when i get to that point i know that i've had way too much meat and things like that and it's time for me to cut back and go back to my my soups and some clean eating so that's what i'm doing today and i'm doing the soup in our pressure cooker now if you have never seen our video my videos before this is our tupperware pressure cooker that you can actually pressure cook in the microwave and i absolutely love this because i can do so many things in here whole chickens desserts beans potatoes you name it i do it in here but for the pressure cooker you have a handle here that is actually a lid lock and is not something to pick your pressure cooker up by because it will uh, could accidentally slip off one end and then that would really really hurt you if it did it also has like a regular pressure cooker it has steam a valve a pressure a valve right here so when this little pressure valve is up you know that it's pressurized you do not open this until that little valve goes down and there's no steam going out of here and that generally takes anywhere eight to ten minutes to uh, pressure down it also has where the lid locks there are arrows on the the lid and there's arrows on the handle so all you do is line that up twist it and it locks it in place also comes with a gasket for inside the ring here you always want to make sure uh, after you use it to clean that gasket off so no buildup gets on it and then put it right back in if in any case that there was something wrong this is made to drop down inside the pressure cooker for a, a release so uh, it's uh, it so it won't hurt you there we go but it's it's got so many safety features on it it also has a little release valve here that if something was to go wrong it will uh, blast that handle up so but nobody I know has ever had a problem <laughs> with the pressure cooker safe to use to use in the microwave and this is what we're using today now today I'm making and I don't have any real recipe I'm sure there's one written out there somewhere but I just happen to like this particular soup because it just sounds good to me uh, one thing you can make this vegetarian and because I do have meat eaters in the house I put in some breakfast sausage so if I don't want the meat I just don't have to eat the meat I eat the vegetables but to this I'm going to cut up some vegetables here I have some carrots and I leave the skins on because I love the, the skins on the carrots. This is a Tupperware chef's knife. We're going to use this today instead of our chopper. And I'm going to top, take the tops off here and the bottoms. Now these have been washed. Like I said, I don't take the skins off. And what I find when you work cooking in the microwave is cut your carrots and things like this on a diagonal. And it makes them thinner and longer and they cook faster that way so I'm just gonna cut these in a diagonal nice size chunks be sure and watch your fingers when you get down there to where you can't feel safe you know change it move it but cut these at a diagonal in here and we will see if I want to add some more carrot in here now I'm a carrot person I love carrots in my soup I also have some celery. I'm going to cut the ends off right here. Now, did you know that when you buy celery in the whole big stock, that if you cut that bottom section off, set it in water, <laughs> you can regrow uh, celery? I have tried it, and it is pretty cool. So, like I said, I'm going to cut these in nice diagonal pieces everybody can get you know nice big crunchy pieces if you have somebody that doesn't like the celery they will see this and able to uh, just pick it out 
but we like celery so there's not a problem there I've got two here that I'm going to cut cut the ends off and then we're like I said just cut it in diagonals and I love the chef's knife it's very sharp so really be careful using it and it holds a sharp blade very well and there is our celery I also have some potatoes here I'm going to cut these in chunks now you could do this with new potatoes if you like whatever you have on hand I'm going to throw them off on the floor here <laughs> cutting them up I'm going to move my other little ingredients there But I love to do soups all the time. I could live on soups. Not so much my family, but I can. <laughs> so when I get to feeling like I just really don't want food today, it's like, do I have to eat? And my husband tells me, yes, you have to eat. <laughs> it's like, but I don't want to. Then I know I've had way too much of the other and I need just to go back to my plain and simple basic recipes. I've got two potatoes. I've got one extra in here. I'm going to put all of this in first and see how much room we have because we have a two quart uh, capacity in here. It has a maximum fill line and a minimum fill line. And one day when I have uh, time to do I will show you another a recipe for a different type of chicken. Now you can do chicken in there, a whole complete chicken, and um, submerge it so you have like a uh, steamed chicken, boiled chicken, but I'll show you how you can do it with less water and uh, come out very, very nice. Now I just took a smaller piece of cabbage and I'm just going to cut this up into chunks. I don't want it real small. I want the chunks to be in there where you can see it. Just cut that in half. And then I have an onion. I'm going to cut the onion in half here. Just use half of it. And then I'm going to take and just do some nice chunk slices. Because not everybody in my family likes to uh, eat onion like I do. There we go. That way, anything that they're not particularly fond of, then they can easily take it out. So I'm going to put all of this in here. And you can adjust this however you like. You know, if you don't want so much of one thing, you can put another in it. You can put other kinds of vegetables that you like in here. But this is just a simple, easy recipe that I particularly like. I'll take my slices apart of my onion. I may have cut too much stuff up in here. Sometimes I get a little ahead of myself because I'm so used to cooking for so many people. You know, at one time we had seven people living in our house, seven or eight people, and I still <laughs> try to cook that much. Let me put the rest of these potatoes in here. rest of these carrots I think I got enough celery in there so this we can eat uh, believe it or not I love celery and peanut butter so I'm gonna save that put that in a little bit of peanut butter so we have that in here and really all I'm going to do next is take my breakfast sausage if you don't want meat in yours by all means don't put meat in it you can use a uh, vegetable broth, you know, do completely vegetarian. That's up to you. But there's our vegetables in here. Before I do that, I'm going to uh, go ahead and finish out my garlic and stuff because I want the meat to be the last thing that I use because it's raw. So with our garlic press, you can uh, squeeze and break the skin to uh, get the garlic skins off you can do the little 
cut the little knobby part on here. Sometimes my garlic is a little bit too small to squeeze, but it did some here. There we go. And we're just going to take that off. Because you're taking this metal piece, putting your garlic up on the handle part here, this metal piece on top of it, then you're going to squeeze it. You hear that little click, a little crunch, and it breaks the skin right off. So we will take this off. And I am a garlic person, so I go through a lot of garlic. If you watch my videos, you know this woman uses tons of garlic, and I do, because I just love garlic. Plus, garlic's very good for you. And I'm going to squeeze that down, get the skin off of here. So if you don't like a lot of garlic, you know, change, change the recipe up. Do, do how you like. So right here, you see this metal part. This handle here, you see the little end on the garlic. I'm going to put that little end there, and I'm just going to lop that off. Cut that off right there. Just like that. And there are the little knobby hard ends of the, the garlic. Let me get all of this out of the way. Now I'm going to take my garlic put it down in here and I want to squeeze my garlic in because the smaller the garlic the more the pungent flavor so if you uh, mash chop you know mince uh, squeeze your garlic it's gonna have a stronger flavor make sure I get all of that in there and see how this is curved all I have to do is take it like this and it just takes the garlic right off all that's left in there is I don't know if you can see it very well or not is just the skin part it has gotten all of the garlic out so I'm gonna get all of that in there and I'm gonna throw in some bay leaf uh, I'm going to put in some salt because potatoes soak up a lot of salt. I'm going to put some extra in there. And mind you now, this looks like I'm putting a ton of salt in here. This is the large kosher salt. But adjust the salt to however you like it. I'm going to do some brown black pepper in here. Ooh, that pepper is strong. And I'm going to put some bouillon cube. Now you can use all vegetable broth, all chicken broth, uh, however you want. Uh, you can use bouillon cubes in water. I do happen to have a can of chicken broth over here, but it's not going to be enough. So this is the um, can opener. To work this, you're going to put it on the top, latch the, the handle here, and then spin around. Sometimes these cans have little spots in there that's been dented so you may have to go around a couple of times you'll hear those snaps and what it's doing is it's breaking the seal the glue seal on the can so you're not cutting the can but you're breaking the seal just like that so you see that little glue pieces and there you go your can is off your lid is off Got that in there. And then I'm going to take, this is just breakfast sausage. This is an all natural uh, breakfast sausage that they have at our store. It has no MSG preserved, you know, it's really good all natural uh, breakfast sausage. And I'm just going to break it off into chunks. Just maybe, you know, some bite sized chunks. Put all of that in here. Now I will tell you that when you use breakfast sausage, it will have some of the grease on top. If you let your soup cool, you can then let it uh, cool down to where the grease gets uh, 
part on there and then take a spoon and skim it off. Or you can like ladle it and get it out of there. But I am putting the sausage in here. I may not use this whole big one pound piece. But these will cut these will cook up into little chunks is what it is. Okay, I'm gonna save that little bit right there. Now let me wash my hands. And there's some hot soapy water over there. And then I'm just gonna finish filling up the pressure cooker. So things are submerged in here. And that brings it really right up to the max line. Because you have to leave room in the top of the pressure cooker for the pressure cooker to build steam and cook. If yours is not getting up to steam, if you already have one and you're wondering what, what am I doing wrong, then uh, you may be overfilling it and not ha allowing it to do enough time of uh, room for steam steam in there okay so we've got everything in there I don't know if you can see that but it's all in there so what we do now is take our top there's a arrow here and an arrow here there's an arrow here and an arrow over here so we're gonna match up those arrows just like that and then we're gonna twist and lock the lid then we're going to take the lid lock here, which is not a handle, it's not a handle, and we're going to put it right there and then snap it right down here into the lid. So this is all locked up. So from here, I'm going to put this on for about 25 minutes in the microwave. I'm going to do it at full power. And then when this is done, we will come back and see how the soup turned out. So you stay here and I'll be right okay, back. Okay guys, so I cooked this for 25 minutes. And then I let it set and cool. The valve is down. There's no steam coming out of the hole. So now it's uh, safe to open. So we're going to unlock the lid here. Take the handle off. And then we're going to twist the lid open. And I will tell you, open it away from your face so you do not burn yourself with steam. As you can see, that steam comes out of there. Whoo! Now this is what it looks like just before I kind of like stir it in. I don't want to get the broth everywhere. The potatoes are cooked. My glasses are fogging up. <laughs> the onion is tender. The carrots, the carrots are tender, but they're not, they still have just a little bit of resistance. They're not, they're not uh, what you want to call uh, hard or anything. They're not mushy but they still have that nice bite to it. So all I'm doing here is kind of breaking up the little bit of that uh, breakfast sausage I put in here. So it gets all through the soup. Don't forget to take the bay leaf out. <laughs> Nothing like uh, my husband biting into the bay leaf wondering what the heck is this? <laughs> We're going to take the bay leaf out. There's one. There's one more in here still. And I'll find that. But I'm just going to go ahead and ladle this up. I've got a clear bowl out here so you guys could see. So you've got potatoes, cabbage, carrots, celery, salt and pepper, some uh, breakfast sausage. And you can see right here, it makes a nice, clean soup, something comforting to eat. Make it a nice pan of cornbread to go along with this. I'm going to try a little bit of carrot. I don't want it really big because it is very hot. See, fork tender. Mm. That tastes so good. You got your cabbage in here. Hmm. Really, really good. 
Now, like I said, if you want to make this vegetarian, just leave the meat out. Or if you have, uh, you can put mushrooms in here. You can do a lot of other vegetables in here. You can use uh, vegetable broth in your soup. So this is really a great easy way for a nice comforting soup on a cold day. Or if you're like me and you're just real tired of food and tired of eating. <laughs> this is probably what you'll want. So... If you have questions about the pressure cooker, please feel free to uh, get with me. I'll be glad to talk with you about it. I can show you how you can uh, uh, get one for yourself. If you'd like to uh, become a consultant and learn uh, from me and doing videos and working on food tastings and custom cooking classes and using the pressure cooker and the stack cooker and all those wonderful things, uh, go ahead and get with me and I'll be glad to talk to you about the business. If you'd like to book a party, I can do in-home or I can do Facebook parties. So just contact me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash twpattydooley or you can email me at pattydooley at hotmail.com. I'll be glad to talk with you. And anytime you want the current brochure and a sales catalog, just let me know. But today, this we just done a nice plain, simple potato cabbage and a breakfast sausage soup so you guys have a great day and i will see you next monday with a new recipe and don't forget that down below check out the links uh in there you will find for a free drawing that you can sign up for once your name is in you're in you don't have to worry about it and come back and fill it out again or anything like that but i do a drawing once a month and then you can catch that on my facebook page at uh just search in tw Patty Dooley, and you'll find me on Facebook. So you guys have an amazing day. Glad I got to spend time with you, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.